Okay, so welcome to the next in your course on the cognitive biases. Today, we are going over that one right there. This is the halo and horns bias, or that is what I like to call it. Sometimes you'll uh, hear it referred to as the, just the, the halo effect, right? In fact, let me go ahead and write that up here. We'll write a couple of the other names, uh, halo effect. All right, you can also, sometimes you'll also hear this referred to as the liking slash disliking, right? Um, tendency. There we go. But I like halo and horns bias because it gives it a little bit of a romantic flair, I think. It's a little dramatic and it's easy to remember. Right, halo and horns bias. It makes it easy to remember. These, all of these right here, I give you all these silly examples and whatnot to make it easier for you to remember. The sillier something is, the the easier it is to remember. In fact, there's been a lot of studies. In fact, I have a book back here, right here, Limitless by Jim Quick, and he talks about a lot. If you're trying to remember something, especially multiple things, the sillier you make those things, like in relation to each other, right? Like imagine like an ice cream cone fishing or something that's silly that would never happen but it makes it easier to remember so anyways a little tangent there halo and horns bias is what i like to call it because we all know what a halo represents and what horns represent in this um in this topic right here in fact let me go ahead and explain what they represent we know the halo is good uh, horns are bad but what does this mean so this bias also known as the liking disliking tendency basically says that Things that you like, whether they be people, whether they be movements, companies, whatever, have a little halo above them, okay? If you like it, you're like, hmm, okay, that thing, I don't mind that thing. And everything that it does, for the most part, is good, okay? Pretty easy to understand. Here, here, let me draw you. Here's you, okay? And you're sitting here kind of thinking. Here's a question mark. You're thinking about some things that come up. Well, one of the things... Has this halo right above it and one of the things let's draw a couple of nasty horns right has this and these are both this is just both the same thing like like a decision that you're making on two different things let's say let's let's talk about let's talk about your dog for example okay so here's your dog which one of these do you think your dog goes under well, some people might be their dog is a puppy or something that's really mischievous, has those horns sometimes. That's not what I mean here. Do we love the dog? Yeah, generally speaking, people who love their dogs, well, we're going to put your dog right under here. Okay, in fact, let me draw a really rough sketch. Here is your dog, okay, and here is its triangular head, and here is its legs. Okay, perfect. We like this dog. Okay, it's not like an anteater or something. This is a dog. This is your dog, and he's got a tail too. Let's just say whatever. It looks kind of like a wiener dog. We'll go with it. So, but anyways, here's your dog. Now, there are things that they can, your dog can do that are good and that are bad, but generally speaking, right, unless you're, I don't know, some sort of person who is out of their mind for have it, having this animal, generally speaking, you like this thing. Overall, you love it. You love seeing it, petting it, feeding it, playing with it, whatever it is. That's what a pet is. If those are not true, you probably shouldn't have this dog. Anyway, so you got your dog here, all right? <laughs> your wiener dog, anteater, head looking thing. So, well, how does this go into the halo and horns bias? Let's say your dog does something. Let's say it comes up and it licks your hand or it wags its tail. Well, those are nice things. Those are halo things, right? Here, let me put an extra, like, you know. That way it kind of looks a little bit more like a ring. It's not a real, it's not an onion ring, right? It's a halo. So your dog does those things and you're like, oh yes, you're my dog. Let's call him Spot. Okay, here's your dog, Spot. And he probably should have a spot on him. So we're gonna draw a spot real quick. Okay, and let's just say he, he's got a spot right there, all right, little brown spot, and what? We call him Spot, we love Spot, so what happens? Well, your dog does all these nice things, okay, and we like that. In fact, let me, let me, let me change this to a different, to a different spot and a different color on here. Let's say his spot is like, like right here. Maybe he's got a couple, right? He's got a couple of spots on him, but he's got one big one, so we call him Spot. So. Let's say that he does those nice things, he does dog things, and we love him for it. Great. Now, let's say he does something else. 
he does something we don't like as much, okay? He does this, or she, whoever it is. He takes a whiz on the rug. Damn, spy. How could you, right? Now, here's the deal. And let's put the, let's put the rug, what, what, let's just say you got this green rug, okay? Because I just want to use different colors here. You got this rug, here's the green, and the part that he took the whiz on is kind of turning this color. Kind of nasty. It's okay, though. Here's the deal. Are we going to disown Spot? Are we going to, like, smack him around or something? Hopefully that's not what you're doing, okay? We're not talking about people who are okay with abusing their animals here. If he does this, which category of that would that specific act fall under? Well, it would fall under the horns category. Why? Well, because we don't want Spot to be doing this. That's the opposite of what we want Spot to do. Let's just say he's a guy so I can say he. All right, so we don't want him to do that. Now, here's the deal, though. Overall, we just established we love Spot. Spot's awesome. He does good things most of the time. Once in a while, he takes a whiz on the rug or something, especially if it's a puppy and you're still potty training them. It's to be expected. He does something bad, but because of the halo effect, or the halo and horns bias is what I like to call it, we already see him as having this halo on, right? Here, I can draw a little halo above his head right here, right? And he can do no wrong. There's a little halo. That, that's what that's supposed to be. Maybe I shouldn't have drawn the inner one because it's so small here. You, you don't really need to see that. There you go. You got a little halo above his head, right? And it's and it's like, and it's it's bright and shiny here. Let's make this one bright and shiny, right? You know, halos are. Ooh. Okay. So that's him. That's Spot. Why don't we just get rid of him? Why don't we? I don't know. I uh, tell. T have a two-hour conversation with him about how he's the worst dog ever. Why do we not stop feeding him? It's not just because of the goodness of our hearts, like, okay, we can't abuse this animal. There is that involved, yes, but why do we continue to, you know, you're mad there for a second, you know, you're tapping your foot, and you're like, Spot, you need to be in timeout. You see that right there? No, you're not supposed to do that. Then 10 minutes later or something, once you're done cleaning the mess up, or I don't know what, what what's going on here, Spot comes back over, licks your hand, and wagging his tail, and you're happy again. Why? Because of this. Because of the halo effect. Because things that you love, even when they do bad things, they are... they It, it blunts the effect. Do you see what I mean? Like, if somebody that you didn't like came over and did this, or maybe there's some dog you didn't like. Hopefully somebody isn't going to do that. You probably moved them to that category right there, the horns category. But, like, if a dog came over that you didn't like, like, it was loud all the time, it was your neighbor's dog, it was barking and keeping you up, it was obnoxious, and they did this, they're gonna stay in that category. Even if they did something nice, even if they wagged their tail in front of you and did some of the spot things, you know, while they're over at your house for some reason, for 20 minutes, they're probably still gonna stay here. Because why? Because that dog keeps you up all night, three or four nights a week, or every night a week, and it's annoying, and it barks at people all the time, and it tears things up when you have to watch it for some reason your friend is gone you have to watch it you can't stand this dog everybody has been in that kind of situation well even if the dog does something nice right here we'll draw we'll draw the other dog this is the other dog okay and he doesn't have any spots we call him spotless okay except for his reputation though with you isn't spotless he's under the horns side here because he barks too much. We'll just say barks. In fact, that might be what you call him, right? You have one of them, like, Native American names to where, like, the name or the nickname is something that the person does. This dog's name is Barks Too Much. Here, let's put, let's give him a tail that's going out of frame there. Complete his doggedness. Anyways, so Barks Too Much comes over, and he might do something nice. He might even be quiet for a little bit. He might come up and lick your hand. He might wag his tail like Spot, but... It is already, this dog barks too much, is already under the horns influence, which is the opposite of the halo effect, the horns effect. And the horns effect says that something you don't like, it's very, very hard for that thing to do something right. Even when it does something right, you're like, nah, you, you've been keeping me up, and you're annoying, and you, I don't know, you bring a bunch of fleas over here, and you eat all of my dog's food, and don't listen, or, I don't, I don't know what happens, right? You guys have been around some animal or somebody right? This isn't about animals. This is about just 
things and people, animals too, and even companies and, and groups of people. This is about, this is just easy to illustrate, right? Even though Spot does something bad, most of you, you already like him. He's already got the halo on, so it's hard for you to take the halo away from him or for him to take it away from himself, right? He does something bad. Maybe he chews up one of your socks, all right, or something like that. But most of the time, he's doing good things, and you love him, okay? You've already got the halo effect going on him. Then you have the horns effect going on, on Sir Barks a lot here, right? And what does that do? Well, no matter how good this dog is, you're, it's always going to have that stigma until it, like, for months on end, does good things and finally breaks the horns at stigma. That's the halo and horns effect. You can see this with other things. Let's take something controversial. Let's take a politician, right? Name a politician you don't like. I guarantee, I guarantee you, if you research it, there are some nice things, some halo-like things that they do, but you'll still not like them. Or you'll do this. You're like, yeah, maybe they did that one nice thing, but look at all these other things. Or, oh, they just did that for publicity or something. It works the other way. Take a politician you do like, right? And... They, guaranteed, because they're humans and not saints, have done something bad, maybe multiple things. And when you find out about those, what does your brain want to do? It wants to, uh, it wants to blunt the effect of those, right? It wants to downplay them. It's like, oh, well, you know, nobody's perfect. Look at all these good things. And, and uh, they're still good for being my politician. I still, I still believe in them and I still all this. Not saying any of that is right or wrong. That is the halo and horns bias. Once something becomes established as a really good thing and you like it, right? Liking, disliking tendency. Once you start really liking something, even when it screws up, it will still have halo status unless it's something catastrophic or, or like repeatedly screwing up over a short period of time. That's different, right? If this dog was like ruining your, uh, your uh, uh, turkey dinner on Thanksgiving or something and then it, it bit your aunt or uncle and then it like... Uh, took a whiz on the rug and then it like was tearing up all of your electronics or something and this was constant yeah he can lose the halo but it's but that usually isn't how things happen usually people and dogs and anything aren't saints they do things that are wrong but overall you've decided already in your brain that you like them so those things don't have much of an effect on taking the halo away same thing with the horns Right? This dog comes over, you see the horns already on him, you're like, you're like, that's Cerberus, man, the dog from hell. That's what you think about Sir Barks a lot. I can't stand him, whatever. He might do one thing nice or something, and I don't care. And I was like, yeah, well, he did that, well, uh, whatever, all dogs do that. He's still a bad dog <laughs> in all of these different ways, right? So, basically, there you go. That's the halo and horns bias. I hope I made it make sense there. Remember, it could use it for other things. Look at yourself. Look at something that you don't like. And I guarantee there's a positive, probably like a positive thing or two about its existence that you've been like, I don't know, neglecting or just not paying attention to because of this right here. Because our brains want to categorize things and keep them in those categories. It makes it easy. And if we every single time, every single time, think about it. If you woke up and saw your dog spot every single day and you had to relearn that you like him, wouldn't that be like a pain? And so the brain does this. It's like, okay, we're going to make a decision. Do we like this thing? Do we not like this thing? And we'll keep it there. I should have drew some fire around these horns. If you go into the... Um, into the uh there's a upgraded version of this class like a premium version that we go really in depth with a lot of different topics and different uh, examples i'll probably uh, draw some fire on those horns for the uh for the effect but there you go that's halo and horns bias um hope it makes sense to everybody and we will see you in the next one thank you